In this video, we'll continue our discussion of section 2.4 and 5 over exact equations. Um, I am going to go through the theory here, um, just kind of read the notes and make sure that you understand what they're talking about as we go through them. So we have this equation in this form. That's where we're starting. And we're going to talk about how to tell if it's exact, but for now, we're going to assume it's going to be exact. So notice there must be an equal zero a one sign and a plus sign separating them two. So if it's a minus, you need to just change it to plus negative. Now, we knew from that last video that there is some function, right? Some function here that I can take the partial derivatives and get each function. That's what we were talking about, that there is a function, hopefully, if it's exact e equation, it does have this function, but that when I take the partial for x, I get m, and when I take that same function, but I take the partial y, and I take that derivative, that partial, I get n. Now, why this works out for us is if that's the case, I can rewrite the equation up there that's in orange to this equation. Just replacing, right? That m is, I think that's a gamma. We'll call it a gamma. Gamma x, I think I'm wrong. Um, forgive me if I am. My Greek letters aren't the best. A uh, gamma x uh, plus, and then gamma y there, we we just replaced. That's all we did is rename. The reason we did that now is from calculus 3, and we talked about this in the last uh, video, that this is actually the chain rule. So that means that I can take the derivative of that answer, gamma, and then this is just a fancy way of saying gamma is a, a function of x, and y that is a function of x. That's all it's saying, is I have a function that has two variables, x and y. If I take that derivative, the chain rule goes me gets me backwards on the arrow, right, going back up here. Um, so we use that. Now, on this step, if we just integrate both sides, that's why we get this. So once we find that function, we can just integrate the other side and set it equal to that constant. That's all it is. And then if, we, if it's an IVP, then we can actually solve the IVP. Okay, so the big task here is finding that function, right? Um, if we have that function, the idea is pretty straightforward. It feels pretty straightforward to me. I've also thought about it quite a bit. You'll eventually, I think, feel like it's pretty straightforward, um, hopefully. So we need to work first on determining if it's an exact equation. So one test that we can run, and this is another formula from Calc 3. Calc 3 says if the function itself is continuous and its first order derivatives are also continuous, and we're going to assume that's true for this, these type of equations, then I know that the mixed partials, that's that line I have highlighted there, they have to be equal. So that means if m is the partial of x, then I would take, the par uh, take that expression, take the expression of y, and then do the same thing here but do it for x, and if they are the same then that tells me that they are exact. So we'll have this for sure. All this is saying in here is that we have the, we can mix them around. Um, they are the same thing. Okay, so we're gonna do an example here um, all the way through this problem. Um, and hopefully this stuff will make some sense for you. So first, um, let's take a look at that example. Oh, let me erase what's there. Forgive me. It's from last time I taught it. I don't think I was going to do this example in this video. But I think we're here. I think the video wasn't too long so far, so I am going to go ahead and do that video. Forgive me. You can tell how long the problem is going to get. There's a faster way to do this, and now I regret not doing that. We are almost there. There we go. You guys have some insight of how much longer we're going to be doing this video. Okay. There we go. Those of you that just uh, copy down and try to make sense, you just pause it there. You don't have to wait until the end of the video now. Um, okay, so we have this DE, and it's not guaranteed that exa it is exact. So we have to show that. I know that M, X, Y is the function that's out front not with the dy dx. So it's 2xy minus 9x squared. Now how I think about this is the, this is um, 
if I were to multiply the whole equation by dx, I would put a dx here, um, and it wouldn't be there. That's all that would do. This is the way I think about it. If it's like that, to find the next part, you take m and you do the opposite variable. I'm going to take the partial with respect to y. That's how I think about it. That, that m function is with dx, so I'm going to do y. So now I take that partial, the partial of 2xy with respect to y is just 2x, and then nine, minus 9x squared is all x, so we're done there. n xy is the other function, so it's 2y plus x squared plus 1. So in x is what we want here, right? The partial with respect to x. All right, I take that partial. 2y is a 0. x squared becomes a 2x. And then the 1 is a 0. Um, so what we're actually saying here is there is some function. Our answer is some function. And we're saying that m is that function when I do x. And that function when I do y will be n. What we just showed is if I do m, y, this is the same thing as the partial x, y, right? I just replaced it with its definition. And this is equal to the, I think it's gamma, x, y. And if I do n, y, uh, n, x, this is the uh, gamma function with respect to y, x. And we just showed that these two things were equal. We just calculated that. Since that is true, then we know that the DE that we're working with is exact. All we did is showed that was the mixed partials. The mixed partials were equal. All right, so now uh, I'm going to write down another note here that's going to lead us to the next part. I know that M, uh, sorry, mu X is M or gamma X, I guess. Either way, whatever we call it. Let's call it gamma. Let's stick with that. My notes, I used mu. So we know that this function gamma that we're trying to find, it's going to be so bad if that's not gamma. Gamma with y is n of xy. We have that. So if I wanted to go backwards to find what that gamma function was, right? If I wanted to know what gamma was, I could just take the integral of gamma x with respect to x. I took the partial with respect to x, so if I take the integral with respect to x, it would take me back. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So let's go ahead and integrate that. We throw that function in there, m of x, y. That is 2xy, 2xy minus 9x squared. And we do this with respect to x. It's important that you do that with respect to x and not y, because that's what m is. Now we're taking it backwards. So this becomes an x squared y minus, um, we get 3x cubed. All right, follow that. If the 3 comes down, I get a 9. And then I get a plus. And now you're going to want to put a plus c. That's what we normally put. But we actually could have had a function of y there. I could have taken that function of y, took, taken the derivative with respect to x, and it would have made a 0. So I know now that... My answer that I'm looking for, gamma xy, is x squared y minus 3x cubed plus h of y. I have that much. I just need that last thing. Well, what I could do now is I could take the gamma function, and I am going to take it, its partial with respect to y. So I do that. The first thing becomes an x squared. The minus 3x cubed goes away. And then I get h prime of y because that's some functional y. I don't know what it is, so I'm going to just do it that way. Well, I'm going to set this because I already have this in my problem. This is in xy, right? The partial, that's what we said at the very beginning, was that m was the answer we're looking for with respect to x, the partial. And then n was the answer we're looking for partial with respect to y. So n of xy, let's go back up and grab that. All right, that is 2y plus x squared, 2y plus x squared plus 1. So that's the equation now we're going to solve. I'm going to write it again so it's clear. So we solve this equation, 2y squared plus x squared plus 1. Now I want you to notice there's an x squared on both sides. They go away. I want to tell you with confidence if the other variable 
doesn't go away. Notice that we just went all the way down to Y's. If you don't get all the way down on this part to one variable, you did something wrong. Something is up, especially if you showed already that it was exact. So at this point, you should only have Y's. Well, I can get H of Y by just taking the integral of 2Y plus 1 with respect to Y. So H of Y then is equal to, okay, I go up by 1, Y squared, right, divide by 2, and then plus Y, and now I get a plus C. I'm going to call this a C1 now. So now I know, not the answer answer I'm looking for, but gamma xy is equal to, when we look back up there, we get x squared y minus 3x cubed. And now I can fill in h of y, y squared plus y plus c1. This is not my answer, though. I have so many students that just stop right here. This is not my answer. This was the answer I said that, hey, I know that I can take the derivative now of that gamma function. I know from the DE itself, because of that chain rule, I get this derivative now. So I actually have DDX of that function. C1 equals 0. And we can take the integral of both sides. I'm not going to rewrite it all again, but this all comes out. And then this other side here, we are going to get a C2, right? The integral of a zero would be a constant because the derivative of a constant is a zero. So now we can just add that to the other side. So I'm going to let, write the left-handed side without the C1, move it to the other side, and we're just going to call it C now. That is my answer, not gamma. Gamma's close. It's always just you take the function and set it equal to C. Um, the theory explains why we get back to this. If you want to take a look back in the, uh, the beginning of this video, or you could uh, take a look at the first video where I run it through an example. All right, um, I believe this was a um, initial value problem, so we need to finish that. So let me add a page here. Um, sorry, you're not going to be able to do so if you're at the end of that page. So using, we have an IVP, it's y of 0 equals negative 3. Using y of 0 equals negative 3. We can plug all that in. Okay, so 0, negative 3 goes into the, all that. Um, I got 0 squared times negative 3 minus 3 times 0. I'm liking the 0 thing. Uh, plus negative 3 squared minus 3 equals C. So we get 9 minus 3 equals C, which means we get 6. Double check, make sure my notes were good. We are good. So we actually get that whole answer. X squared Y minus 3X cubed plus Y squared plus Y equals 6. So there is... Our final answer. It's kind of a neat method. Um, it does take a bit of staring at and thinking about to get down um, to understanding why it's working. You can do this. I promise. It's just a uh, chain rule using partials. Just go refresh your chain rule from Calc 3, then take another look at this. There's a method in Calc 3 towards the end um, that we did that was very similar to this method. Um, if you guys just got out of Calc 3, maybe it didn't go away in three or four weeks. Um, I guess it's been more than that, but all right, there we go.